Hello and welcome. Thank you guys so, so much for being here today. This is really exciting to have this many people here. My name is Jen Leinhardt. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications uh, for the work group. I am just going to do a couple of housekeeping notes and then I'm going to send it on to the folks that really matter here. So just as a reminder, please silence your cell phones. Also, you don't have to wear a mask outside. You do inside, but you can take it off outside. <laughs> Um, restrooms are available inside in the warehouse through the gymnasium. Uh, there's staff members in uh, dark blue, light blue, and green polo shirts. So if you have a question, find one of them. They'll help you out. Um, and again, about our masks, regardless of your vaccination uh, status, please, please wear your mask inside. We do have teens that are under 18 and cannot be vaccinated. So also just to know, we have light snacks and we have water inside, or I'm sorry, water over here, snacks inside. Feel free to grab something. And uh, after our event, there's a couple of things to know. There will be tours of the warehouse inside. Um, you're going to go inside. You'll see a bunch of these lovely polo teenaged folk, and they're going to take you around the building. Um, we're also going to be selling some of our swag. So if you see some of the shirts, pins, hats that you like, they're available for purchase, and we would love to see our community members wearing them. Um, so I think that is it. So please join me in welcoming Blake the Brain Sanders to the stage. Thank you. Hold on, listen. I, I, they, they, they hired me to bring the energy, and I was supposed to have some theme music. Okay, can we do this again? Can, Jen, come on up here. Jen, where you go? Where you go? Jen, where you go? Listen, come on up here. There you go. So you've been in the gym. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. And now, Blake the Brain Sanders! <laughs> All right, all right, all right, cut that DJ. That's, I always want to do that because the comedians always do that and I always want to have my own intro, but I appreciate you guys. Thank you, you was right on cue too. I like, what is your name? Is that Miss Caroline? Miss Caroline? I, how you doing, Miss Caroline? I like that because soon as the B came on, she was like, mm, mm, me too. And then she almost did a raise the roof. I was just <laughs> watching BET, okay. <laughs> hey, man. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Teen Warehouse grand opening ribbon cut and clap it up for yourselves ladies and gentlemen all right now they they brought me in to bring the energy and i always like to get the energy from the crowd i see we got cameras we got a whole crew i see a whole bunch of people out here i see people that i grew up with i see people that i never seen before day in my life all mixed here together and we're gonna have a great time so if you're ready to have a good time say yep, yep. hold on <laughs> what's your name sir patrick and I say this must be the VIP because y'all got name tags. I say, say, yup, Patrick said. Patrick, I need to hear you this time. Everybody, if you're ready to have a good time, say, yup. Once again, Patrick, we're going to do this for you. You're going to say, yup. There it is. All right, all right, all right, all right. Clap it up for Patrick. That's what I'm talking about. All right, here at the web. The warehouse we develop for teens by teams to create a innovative one-step center serving teens ages 13 through 19. At the warehouse we see our teens in action and know they want more. All they need is the opportunity so we need support from you guys in the community that believes in them. I know that very importantly because I actually grew up right not too far from here around the corner on Pine Street 22nd and Pine from the Old Walks Chicken. Anybody know the rim of the Old Walks Chicken? That's when the chicken was good before they moved over west side right? I look, I look, I know. I, look. I mean, it's all right. It ain't the old school, but we understand how important these centers are for the teens. And I always say, and, and I went to the Boys and Girls Club. This wasn't here when I was younger, but if it wasn't for the Boys and Girls Club, which was right around the corner from where I lived at, I promise you I would not have made it to where I am right now. So having this teen center, have you people come and support and show your love uh, for the warehouse, the Kingwood community, uh, the whole work group, the organization is phenomenal. So we appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. And just clap it up for yourselves one time.
And as you know, the construction for the warehouse was completed in 2020, but of course, uh, which no one seen, we had the pandemic which hit us and we weren't able to have the grand opening then, but we had some soft openings here and, and we have some teams behind us and we had a year where we kind of went through some things uh, to figure some things out. So now we're having a grand opening today and uh, uh, I don't know if we're going to have a shutdown again, but we, I'm glad we're getting this grand opening in right now to continue to figure out how we're going to move forward um, on this great milestone. Today I'm joined by members of the Warehouse Teen Executive Committee who are going to help me with moving today's show. And I had uh, a great opportunity. I had a, uh, a group here. It was called Failures, is Goal. Failures and Goals, which I have this shirt on. And they were a part of it. So I got the great opportunity to get to know these teens very hands-on. And they are phenomenal. Phenomenal teams. And I'm going to introduce them one by... Yeah, clap it. That's right. That's right, Ms. Dorsey. All right now. I'm going to introduce them one by one, so when I introduce you, please stand up and you know, wave a hand, do what you do, all right? All right, first up, the Teen Executive Community President and the co-board chair, Ms. Anaya Patterson. <laughs> the Teen Executive Committee First Vice Chair, Jamir Hargraves. Teen Executive Committee Second Vice President, Vice Chair, excuse me, Ms. Zora Rothwell. <laughs> and last and certainly not, not least, Teen Executive Committee Events Coordinator, Tyler Davis. <laughs> now, as we move forward, I want to bring up the CEO here at the warehouse and um, He's probably gonna kill me for saying this. He's, he's a CEO now, which is big time. But I knew him when he was a, just a little top model, okay? <laughs> this is no lie, I'm, this is true stories. Every time I seen him, I called him top model because he was about like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, and he literally had a hair full of hair down to here. He grew up right on the east side of town. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the CEO here at the warehouse, Mr. Logan Heron Sr. <laughs> Look at him smooth. He don't even wear no socks no more. He's so smooth. So that's, I guess that's my theme music. One correction, I grew up on the west side. Get him, get, get him. Get him. So I, I called Blake today. I was like, yo, you know I run a tight ship here. Everybody gets two minutes. Blake took about 20 minutes, so some of you are gonna have to relinquish your time. Um, but now I love Blake, grew up with Blake, played basketball against Blake until I got too old. And um, you still play basketball? No, I'm done. Okay, yeah. So we wisened up with our, with our age. Um, thank you so much for being here. I see so many friends, family, supporters, contributors to this project. This is a project that's been in the making for not that long. Um, we came up with this concept in 2017, but I'll tell you about that in a second. I first want to acknowledge some special people, and I feel like everyone should probably stand at some point. Um, we'll start with our elected officials, minus the ones that will be speaking today, because I'll be here all day if we did those. Um, so in no particular order, so please excuse me. Uh, Senator Dave, I'm going to announce all of you, then you can stand and we'll acknowledge you, okay? Because we'll, again, with tight schedule. Senator Dave Sicola. Deputy City Treasurer Alfred Lance. Um, we have representing the Newcastle County Office, uh, Jessica Gibson Brokenbow, but I know Newcastle County, M Matt Myers here as well. Um, we have State Representative, I think, is Michael Smith here. I know he RSVP'd. Uh, State Representative Frank Cook. Um, Secretary of Natural Resource and Environmental Control, Sean Garvin. Senator Laura Sturgeon. Senator Sarah McBride. I see my mentee, Alex Hackett from Senator Carper's office who grew up on my block, 10 years younger than me, knocked on my door every day. What you doing, what you doing, snot nose and everything. Until I went off to college and then he, that's right, shout out. He, uh, he told me recently because my mom answered the door one day, mom, where you at? Right here. Mama Tony, everybody knows Mama Tony. Give it up for Mama Tony. Um, he said when she answered the door one day and said he went off to college, that's what inspired him to go off to college. Delaware State University graduate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
and uh, State Treasurer M Kathy McGinnis is here as well. Did I? M oh, say uh, I'm sorry. Auditor, auditor. You deal with money, finances. Okay. Um, did I miss any elected officials? She's speaking, but thank you. She is important. All right, that's a pretty good job. Okay, thank you, Tish, and whoever else helped put this list together. As to I have not embarrass myself any further than the theme music that was played. Um, also, let me recognize my work group board members. So if you are a board member of the Warehouse Reach Riverside Kingswood Community Center, please stand. Come on, don't be shy now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our partners, if you are a partner of the warehouse, please stand. We got 150 of them, so I know you better stand up. If we don't call them funders, we call them investors, we can call them partners, but today our investors Stand, please stand, and if you are standing, please wave your hand. <laughs> wait, Don Mel, Tom Horn, I see you. Scott Malfitano, CRC, I see you, thank you. I feel like Jay-Z, anybody been to a Jay-Z concert where he's like looking at the nosebleed section? I see you in the red hat back there, and it, just to make you feel acknowledged. Um, but that's a smart way to acknowledge all the funders in case I miss anybody later on in the, in the program. Um, most importantly, and last but not least, the warehouse tagline is for teens by teens. So if you are a teen, stand up and give them some music. Give them some intro. All right, that's enough. You were a little late with it. I should have prepped you. I'm sorry. That's my fault. That's my bad. That's my bad. That's why I'm not emceeing today. Thank you. Um, so we're going to get right into it. And I, I do want to tell you the story about the warehouse because it actually um, starts with the teens that are on the stage. All of them were with us three years ago when we reached out to our partners and said, we want to do something special. We want to hire you for the entire summer. And we hired 25 teens and they were, we interviewed, I think, over 50. Um, and these are some of the teens that were left standing um, for the past three years. Uh, they call themselves the OGs. Um, but in 2017, after I had been at Kingswood Community Center for a year, um, realized that we were not meeting the needs of our teens in our community. Um, we were literally and figuratively kicking, kicking them out of the cold because we were focusing on the 12 and under where the child care subsidies come into play. And when you run childcare, you cannot have teens in the building at the same time. Uh, so 5, 30, 6 o'clock, was like, all right, teens, y'all can come in. If I'm a teenager from 2.30 to 6 o'clock and I got my own device and what I want to do, I'm not coming into Kingsway Community Center where you're going to stick me in a room with some video games. So we started to socialize the idea. Um, we looked down the street, and there was a 113,000 square foot warehouse. And I remember we were meeting with a lot of our partners, Stu Sherman from the Boys and Girls Club, and we were kind of trying to come up with a name. And he was like, Teen Center? He's like, it's a warehouse, call it the warehouse. So if you ever wondered why we call it the warehouse, that's why we call it the warehouse. But as we began to socialize the idea, as we began to involve the teenagers into the party, uh, what first started with like three or four partners we were looking at, snowballed into 20 and 30 and 40. And before we knew it, we were like 10,000 square feet and a warehouse is not gonna get it. We need to find a bigger space. And by the gift of God, recognize that prestige was no longer being occupied. And we approached Capital One. And we took Mayor Przicki and Thayer DuPont. Me and Dave Ford. Dave, where are you? Give it up for Dave Ford. Dave Ford always likes to say he carries my bag. The bag has a little bit of money in it now. Um, but Dave and I realized we had to punch above our weight class, so we took in the heavy hitters, Thayer DuPont and Mayor Pazicki. And we approached Joe Westcott and his team in Northern Virginia who controls the assets, and we said, we want your building. Um, we were at a purpose built. That was in March of 2018. In October, 
we were at a purpose built communities conference and we were about to leave and Dave calls me from the airport because you know I had to stay in town for a little bit and get my party on in Orlando. Um, but Dave called me and he said, Logan, you won't believe it, I just got a call from Joe. They're gonna donate the building, but we gotta take ownership by the end of this year. And it was the end of October. We closed on December 26, uh, 2018. So, ironically enough, you may have seen it in the media today. Capital One just donated another building. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. Um, they donated it to Delaware State University. Can I do that if I didn't graduate? Can I? I'm on one of the boards there. I can do that. Okay. Am I? Is it the right angle? Right angle. Okay. Um, so. Delaware State University um, will be moving some of their graduate programs there, workforce development, their Center for Neighborhood Revitalization Research, which actually started out of this building. Okay, we got represent one representative. Patrick, you can learn something. Okay. Um, but also, our new workforce development training program called RISE, Reaching and Investing in Youth for sustainable employment. That is the one acronym around here that I did not come up with. Shout out to Melody and Sierra. Um, <laughs> it is a 90-day workforce development training program that we have been cultivating over a number of years and refining and evolving. Much credit to Melody and her team. Uh, by the end of this year, we will be employing and training 125 teams. This really started about last year when Don Mel from J.P. Morgan Chase reached out to me and him and uh, Rob Bicini, um, we're concocting an idea. If you ever walk into Deco and you see Don Mel and Rob Bicini, you know they're up to something. But uh, Don called me, he said, hey, we want to um, help you with your workforce training. Um, we have some funding to put behind it. Uh, and BPG wants to bring in Le Cave and the new head chef there and teach culinary. So we said, let's do it. So that was like the first career track. Then we had Nerd It Now, Markevis Gideon, who is a board member, former Riverside resident. Shout out to Markevis. Then we had Code Differently, started by Tariq Hook and, and Stephanie Eldridge. And then we had, who's our other one? Christiana I was going to say them for last, but thank you. Christiana Kerr, because I'm a board member. Christiana Kerr came in. So at the end of the day, 90 days, workforce development training program. They are prepared to enter the workforce. And then they're paired with an employer partner. And we have said such a community investment into this program. I was talking to Tony a few weeks ago, and he was like, you want to partner with us on this new building? And I was like, well, you know, I got to run it by the board. He was like, man, we're just talking conceptually. So then a press release comes out, and we're partnering with them <laughs> conceptually. Um, but it looks like we might have a five to 6,000 square foot floor in that new building to expand the 125 per teen goal from this year to 250 teens per year, creating a pipeline to DSU. So anyway, I know I am claiming a lot of time, but it's important for you to understand the groundswell of support that is coming in support of the, the warehouse. But this is not about the warehouse. This is not about me. This is not about you. This is about them. This is about our teams. And other projects that we're working on, this courtyard is about to be transformed in partnership with BPG, where it is going to be like if you've been to Constitution Yards or Maker's Alley, you know, you'll catch me at Maker's Alley on any given night we will be transforming this into like a Constitution Yards Maker's Alley on steroids thanks to our partnership with BPG. So you'll see those renderings in the hallway if you didn't already see them. We are converting this old police annex behind us into the Wealth Garage in partnership with the Coleman Family Foundation and m and Bank. Shout out to both of you for making that happen where we are building an entrepreneur incubator. So any business idea that they have, like a clothing line started by Jamir, or addressing food insecurities with our ag pod where we're vertical, doing vertical farming and agriculture, um, training maybe CDL drivers for our $400,000 electric bus. Shout out to Denrec UD and Delmarva. I see you, Secretary Garvin. Um, I'm trying to work in these shout outs, I'm telling you. Um, no, I, I, uh, executive. Oh, too yeah, no, executive decision. Um, I also want to shout out Food Bank of Delaware, I see, with the tie-dye shirts. We have a food bank upstairs called Plenty. Plenty of the food, plenty in the house for everyone. Um, we also have the illustrious Dr. Barnett, who is leading Kingswood Academy. 
upstairs. Kingswood Academy is an alternative school for 7th to 12th graders, partners with all the school districts in Newcastle County, and this year they set a record 38 seniors graduating from Kingswood Academy. Did I get it wrong? Oh, we had some, okay, we had some graduating in the fall. 62, 61, soon to be 62 tomorrow. And last but not least, maybe not least, not, maybe not last, but uh, Eastside Charter School, and Aaron will tell you more about this later, will also be located in here with their Apex Honors Program for two years as they build out a new facility. Big things are happening at the warehouse. Um, big things are happening for our community, if you can't tell, but it takes all of us, it takes the village. I wanna, I'm not done yet, hold on. Don't be trying to clap me off the stage. I have waited four and a half years for this. My math is wrong, but you understand what I'm saying. So um, I do want to close with something just a little bit deeper. Um, if you know me, I'm a man of faith. I don't like to profess that to everyone and, and be boisterous about it. But if you know me, you know it. And um, say it proud, right? I hear you. I hear you. Um, but I was watching a sermon over the weekend, thanks to you, Sean Air. And the, the pastor said, um, charity is solving for the suffering. Philanthropy is solving for the problem that causes suffering. Today we are solving for the problem that causes the suffering. We're getting to the root cause of it. And he also went on to say that David conquered Goliath with one stone, but he had five. Today we celebrate solving a problem, but this is just one stone. And we have plenty of stones left, which means that the work group is just getting started. You also saw in that hallway, a new, we said 30 million a couple weeks ago, it's probably gonna be a 40 to 50 million dollar new Kingsway Community Center, bringing resources to the community. 600 homes, if you drive to Riverside, you'll see those new homes sprouting up. Gentrification without displacement is what we're doing. Building homes, moving existing resident, residents over and empowering and supporting them with economic mobility. That's what we're focused on. I just feel like a little preaching. Uh, Call and response here. I hear you, Miss Diane. Eugene Young's mother in the building. My best friend and the secretary of the Delaware State Housing Authority. Last thing the pastor said is a man or woman is not measured by how many followers they have on social media. They are measured by how many great men and women are raised up under them. Today, we are raising great men and women up under us. Give it up for yourselves for making that possible. So without further ado, we're going to get into our first speaker, because I know she has places to go. She's a pretty important person, our Lieutenant Governor. Bethany Hall Long, I'm going to do a little intro, if you don't mind. It was written, so I have to read it, or I'll get in trouble. Born and raised on our family's farm in Sussex County, Bethany graduated from Indian River High School. After graduation, she went on to pursue her childhood dream of becoming a nurse at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. Bethany completed her PhD in health policy and nursing administration from Georgia Mason University and served as a fellow for the U.S. Senate as well as the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Please join me in welcoming Bethany to the stage. Oh, hold on, we got, oh, got a COVID. COVID. Yes. That Please variant COVID. is out here and it's real. Yes. That's Thank you. I thought you were giving me a little music, not I the bio. You were and uh, I was I, preaching. You know, preachers oh, have yeah, I know. Oh, you were. And I'm a pastor's daughter, and I was not planning on talking about faith, hope, and charity. But we will start, we will start there. And to whom much is given, much is expected. And what a great day. I know if you look at the agenda, all of us are supposed to be done speaking. So we will be brief. You have city, you have county, you have state. You have all of us here to celebrate. And I will say to you, there is nothing, nothing more important than what has occurred here. Partnership, community, the work group, applause. You know why? To Logan and his team, we have began to not only talk the talk, you all are walking the talk. And thank you, meeting all the needs. I'm not going to repeat all the great things Logan has talked about, but when you come to do a ceremonial event and you have this diverse community, many philanthropists, persons coming together, you're doing something right. And we are so thrilled. I spent the morning with our auditor at the pardons hearing. 
Logan, you hit it nail on the head. We're preventing children from going in the wrong direction, and we're uplifting our community. I am delighted to be here. I cannot wait to cut the ribbon. And I want to say to the work that's already happened, all the things you're talking about, Anaya, where are you? Anaya got to get her vaccine with me here as a nurse, and we went in the streets, Xanthia Oliver, City Council, and others, handing out Narcan, doing good work, feeding folks, right? Before we've cut the ribbon, before you've officially opened, and all the work that we've had uh, in the uh, avenue of environment. So my two minutes are up. I just wanted to, again, be here to celebrate and to say thank you, and I cannot wait to get the scissors going, because this is going to rocket all these great partnerships, a model, model for America. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hall. And like you said, I guess we're going to keep this thing moving. Uh, the next person I'm going to bring up to the stage, room, he needs no introduction, but I actually went to college with him, and he grew up on the east side. He went from councilman to a senator. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senator Darius Brown. Good afternoon. I want you to know that Blake was like that all the time at Dell State. I'm not gonna keep you long this afternoon. Uh, for those that were wondering why Logan was talking about faith, it's because Bishop Morton, he is the, as Bishop Morton knows, he is the grandson of the late Reverend Otis Herring, former pastor of the Union Baptist Church. And in the classic Baptist tradition, every Baptist preacher gets three closings. <laughs> Logan had five, <laughs> Logan had five. Uh, so I want to thank you uh, for allowing me to be here, and I brought my very tall son to be with me uh, here this afternoon because, as Logan and Blake knows, when we grew up, there was a fashion um, design group of males by the name of FUBU uh, and designed uh, clothing under the acronym For Us, By Us. And we're here today at the Teen Warehouse because this is for teens and by teens. And we look at how we can build better neighborhoods in the northeast section of the city of Wilmington, but actually how we can reach into every corner of the city of Wilmington and expand opportunity and hope for our children. The Teen Warehouse helps us to shape and mold our future. And Ms. Beebe, I look forward to coming back and sharing with these young men and how we can continue to do that. And so Logan didn't ask me to do this, uh, but as we celebrate the warehouse, we recognize this is a collaborative work of Reach Riverside. And so every one of you here have played a part, and you will play an even larger significant part in the success of this project. And no matter how large or how small, I'd ask you today to reach into your pockets to give and reach into your hearts to serve. We need every parent, every grandparent, every auntie to enroll their children to be a part of this program because today we reach back so that we can thrust our children forward. I believe that the future is looking back at us and it is praying for us to see beyond our time. Thank you. One of our colleagues and champions in this work to continue that progress represents the third representative district on the west side of Wilmington. I think you need Uber to get there. Uh, State Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, I see one of my constituents and my husband's fraternity brother. Shout out <laughs> to the third district. What I would like to do just really quickly as the co-chair with Anaya Patterson, one more time for Anaya Patterson. As Senator Brown already stated, he acknowledged Bishop Aretha Morton, whose church is in my district, so I'm just more than happy and proud to be able to serve. The point of today is, and a child will lead them. That's what the word tells us. And today is the eighth month. And eight is God's number of new beginnings. Today is the fifth. That's God's number of grace. So on today, we have new beginnings in grace. 
And that's what I'd like to leave you with. May God bless you and keep you. Um, hello, everyone. As you know, um, I'm Anaya Patterson. Um, I serve as the Teen Executive Committee President and the co-chair of the Warehouse Board. Um, today, I have the honor of introducing Representative Stephanie T. Bolden to the stage. Um, Stephanie T. Bolden is a law law lifelong resident of Wilmington, Delaware. She's the longest serving elected African American woman in the state of Delaware. including um, the second African-American woman elected in the Wilmington City Council, serving five terms, and the first woman elected president pro tempore. If I said that right, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, please join me in welcoming Representative Stephanie T. Bolden. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Delaware State has been mentioned so many times. I am a product of Delaware State College then, now University. All the Delaware State alumni, please stand if you're here because I want to let them show you what a great school this is. Where is the music? <laughs> Hornets, yeah. <laughs> I'm also um, a former resident of what we used to call 11th Street Bridge over here in this area. And um, I'm also proud to say that I was very instrumental in working when this building here was Moyer Academy, one of the first uh, charter schools that were here in the city of Wilmington, and then Prestige Academy, which was for all male students, one of the first and only here in the city of Wilmington. So I'm just really proud and excited to see where we are now with the warehouse and that it's still being used. As a retired teacher and legislator, and on behalf of everyone here today, I'm happy to support a local group, youth serving organization, the Teen Warehouse. There are so many endless and positive possibilities for this place, but all hands need to be on deck in order for it to work. We must continue to open doors to be, have a safe place for our youth. We must continue to serve them and challenge their creativity so that they'll be able to explore the interests that they're most passionate about. This place truly, truly marks the beginning of newfound support for our young people to develop the skills they need for success and academic achievement and employment opportunities. I'm also honored to be here and witness courageous people committed to keeping our youth engaged. That is so important in today's society. Providing an alternative place to the streets of Wilmington that swallow up many of our children. I believe that the Teen Warehouse will help improve life outcomes for our youth in the city and city residents that are here today. From quality after school programs, which are so essential to the part to support the need and offer youth and in the opportunity for community service, this place is a win-win place that will provide more structure to our kids. Win-win place. Let's hear it for the win-win place. <laughs> so today, as uh, Senator Brown indicated, make it our business to look at the opportunities to build, to partner, produce more programs for our youth that will consider this place home away from home by donating, volunteering, contributing your time, effort, and most of all, your love for this particular facility. Correct, Representative McBride? And on JFC, as a member of JFC, the Joint Finance Committee for the State of Delaware, I will make sure that the money flows into this building. Thank you. Y'all can hear me? <clears throat> okay, cool. All right. Greetings, everyone. My name is Tyler Davis. Um, I'm a founder member of the Teen Warehouse, and I also serve as the event coordinator on the Teen Exec Committee. Today, I have the honor of welcoming Mayor Mike Prezicki to the stage. 
Mayor Przicki is Wilmington's 57th mayor and is currently serving his second four-year four term as the city chief uh, executive. His time as mayor is driven by his desire to see the city run on a high level of efficiency to increase the level of shared property among his citizens, his citizens and to confront the problems who many uh, cities experience throughout the country. During his time as, the, as mayor, the city has seen almost a billion dollars of private investment injected into the local economy. Wilmington has invested 14 million in its neighbor, neighborhood, park, and public spaces. Mayor Przicki has been a longtime advocate and supports the work group, and we are honored to have his presence today. Join me in welcoming Mayor Przicki to the stage. Yeah, you, th you think that's easy? <laughs> well, you're 75. Let's see if, let's see if Ted Blunt can do that. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, thank you very much for that very kind introduction. But I have to tell you honestly, I've waited all, I've waited all day because Blake, I want you to introduce me. Do give me a proper introduction. <laughs> Come on, let's go. You know how? Big Mike. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, golly. Thank you so much for being here. I've really, I've, en I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed watching this beautiful project work. I've watched everything that's going over on Reach Riverside is such an inspiration. When I was at the riverfront, people would always ask, uh, you know, what are the components? What makes things work? And I'd say, first, you have to have a vision. You got to believe in seeing something. They do here. Second, you need leadership. And when I was saying that, I wasn't just talking about me. Russ Peterson, Tom Carper, uh, members of the Bond Bill Committee who really just believed in our project. That's second. Third, you gotta have money. You gotta have money. And I look out here and I see the funders, Tom Horn, thank you so much for everything you do for, with JP Morgan. Um, Don Mel gets all the credit, but you know, the guy at the top, he, uh, he authorizes this stuff. But, you know, it doesn't work without funding. But honestly, funders only give to things they really believe in. And Logan, you and your team have created credibility in this community that's, uh, that's unparalleled. We have, uh, uh, as so many people know, the city got about $50 million from the federal government with ARPA funds. And so the important thing for us to do is think about what we do with it. And I, I know one thing that President Congo and I share. That money is gonna go into neighborhoods. We've had, <clears throat> no, 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 we have, you know, people believe, people believe that all we do in the pr public sector is throw money in the downtown and the, and the riverfront. 90% of that money is, is private money. But the perception is real. But when you take a look at our city and you, and you walk through the neighborhoods and you see, you see the poverty that creates an environment that is not it's not healthy for our kids. And damn it all, we're gonna change that. We're gonna take our money, we're gonna put it right in the neighborhoods, and uh, people who haven't been able to fix up their houses for years, they're not gonna be able to unless they get a hand. We're gonna give them a hand. That's what we're gonna do. And, and I, hope we're, I hope we're able to stretch our resources so that, that we can be inspired by what you do, piggyback on it, and just uh, create a remarkable vision for our, our city, and let me say the last thing, is what, what I believe, and I think a lot of folks share this belief, that we can provide tools and funding, but ultimately this community is gonna be a reflection of the community members themselves. And that's what's happening here. This is, this is something for, the, for our teens, but it's gonna become what those teens want it to be. And that's exciting. Thank you very much, good to be with you. Appreciate it, Big Mike, Big Mike. Big Mike! Big Mike! Every time I see him, no matter where I see him, he could be walking down the street. I just yell it out, Big Mike! He'd be like, oh, I'm like, hey, baby, yeah, right now. I'm gonna give him a heart attack. He said he's 75, huh? <laughs> Make sure I say something next time. Now, he's in the gym. He works out. He works out. The next gentleman I want to bring to the stage, I always want to know his nickname. How did he get it? Um, he's a proud Wilmingtonian, um, another Delaware State University grad. Am, am, am I correct? Um, he said, all right. 
Um, he does so much for the city of Wilmington. Um, he does so much for the community and the youth. Um, he actually used to have a, a, a TV show called The Congo Hour. Anybody used to watch The Congo Hour? Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Next up, coming to the stage, and please tell me how you got your nickname, Ernest Trippy Congo. <laughs> now, that's, that's a real question. He needs some theme music. Give me something. Oh, oh. Look at my, listen, Patch is my guy. Oh. Thank, thank you, Blake. That's right. DSU in the house. Thank you, DJ. Just shout out to all of the children who made this reality. Again, if you have not been, if you had not already toured the Teen Warehouse, just prepare to be amazed. It's simply incredible what they have put together. And this really needs to be the standard for every community center that is in Wilmington, that is in the county, and that is in the state. That's how awesome this place is. This is the standard. We can accept nothing less for our children. I believe that as elected officials, with our funding, with the contacts that we have, we need to make sure that every part of Wilmington has a teen warehouse. So again, I'm not gonna be before you long, I just, I'm just thankful to, to be a part of such a, a wonderful event. And again, I just, just prepare to be amazed once you walk in and see everything that they have done it. And as we struggle to kind of re reconstruct and reinvent our, our school system, our school districts need to, come in, need to come in here and take a look at what these young adults have put together and implement those, implement these ideas in our, in our schools. So again, shout out to you all. Thank you so much. And I look forward to coming back and, and volunteering. Wanna make, wanna make a, a plea to all of my, my friends and my colleagues to come back and, and, and be visible because we're who they look up to and children become who they see and they need to see us in this building. Thank you so much. Oh. So my nickname, <laughs> my, my nickname. Well, I was, I was born two months early, and my parents went on a trip. And as soon as they got back from the trip, my mom had me. So they said the trip made me come early. So they've been calling me Trippy since I was born. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. So when people call me, Ernest is my real name, but if somebody calls me Ernest, I know that they don't know me or they're a bill collector. So I usually, I usually ignore them. So if you, want, if you want me to respond, just call me Trippy. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Jamir Hargraves and I currently serve as the first vice president of our Warehouse Teen Executive Committee. Nathaniel Oliver is a native Wilmingtonian and a life, lifelong resident of the city. A graduate of Wilmington's historic Howard High School, Nathaniel also holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Marketing from Delaware State University. Stay. <laughs> as an elected official, she is committed to utilizing her platform as a public servant to advocate for issues of quality education, workforce development, and jobs for underserved populations, as well as service for seniors and our youth. Please welcome Councilwoman Oliver to the stage. <laughs> Y'all funny. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Councilwoman Xanthia Oliver. I represent this third district, all of our third districts. Today is a wonderful day for the third district because today it's all about the youth. We have so many teens here today, and this is all about them today. The warehouse, for, the warehouse will forever be a unique place for the youth because the teens that live within the surrounding neighborhoods have been involved in the planning of these stages. The motto of the warehouse is teens by teens, for teens by teens. It's so powerful because it speaks to the voice that was given to our youth. Because of the opportunity that Logan and Kenyatta, and Kenyatta, I must really give her a round of applause. She calls me every day, every day, literally, like I work for her. Woo! 
Ooh, it's funny, it's funny. <laughs> I really do, she really does, I'm sorry. I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> the warehouse is more than just a place for the teens to hang out. It's a place where the teens can thrive, where they can learn skills to become individuals and become creative, learn how to cook. Uh, they get their education, physical and mental needs fulfilled. Calls to action. Please, if you have teenagers or know of any teenagers who live in this area and could not be here today for the celebration, encourage them to utilize the center because it, bec it, really, bec it really belongs to them. Thanks again. You have a good one. Thank you, Miss Oliver. She just turned my whole notes. I gotta find this. What you, what you, what you do up here? I gotta find it. Y'all think I'm playing. She turned everything. Just turned the whole book and everything. Turned the fo oh, it's her folder. There you go. She doing magic tricks and everything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker coming to the stage is the Newcastle County Executive, Matt Meyer. Matt Meyer grew up in off Shipley Road, attended Brandywine School District Schools, and graduated from Wilmington Friends School. Prior to becoming County Executive, Matt worked as a math teacher, diplomat in Iraq. Didn't know that, Matt. <laughs> didn't know, I definitely didn't know that. Um, as an economic advisor to the Delaware Governor Jack Markell and started two successful businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your Newcastle County Executive, Matt Meyer. If he's in the building, I know money is in the building. Yeah, I got the music. I appreciate it. Trippy, I got the music. I didn't have to beg for it. <laughs> Ernest, Ernest. Good afternoon. This is good. This is a great crowd. Still awake. Usually by the time they get to the county executive, we got a, a few snoozers. This is pretty good. Everybody's awake out here. I want you to take a minute and count. I mentioned I was a, a former teacher. Just count. You see those blue windows there? Count one, two, three, four. The fourth window. One, two, three, four. Actually, four and five. Ten years ago, I came home from Iraq. I grew up in Delaware. I was a diplomat in Iraq. Lived on a military base for a year. Uh, and then I came back and I wanted to teach. And I taught sixth grade math in that classroom right there. And so the first thing I want you to imagine is how hard it is to teach sixth grade math when kids, all the kids with their peripheral vision can see the playground. <laughs> and the next thing I want you to think is teachers. Any, any teachers in here? Teachers, former teachers? Teachers have a secret. I think a lot of parents have this secret too, but especially teachers, especially middle school teachers. You realize at some point there are more of them than there are of us. So at some point, if they really, really want to, they can take the place over. And you just hope that by the time the school year's over, they don't realize that. And so it's a little ironic to be here because Mr. Logan, they took your building over. And it's an amazing thing. It's something that really realizes many of the hopes and dreams I had for my own sixth graders when I taught in that classroom. Listen, on behalf of the nearly 600,000 people in Newcastle County, I just want to say thank you to Logan, Melody, Dave Ford, who's around here somewhere, the entire staff, the board, and so many people here who did everything they could to make this thing possible. Charlie, of course. We know there aren't the big bucks. You're here doing it because you believe in the future of this neighborhood. You believe in the future of this city. And you believe in the future of this state. So thank you so much. I just want to close with a quote from Lao Tse, who was a Chinese philosopher centuries ago, who would say, a leader is best when the work is done the people look back and say, hey, we did this ourselves. So hats off to the leadership of the warehouse for everything you're doing here. These kids look forward and see that this future is ours and it's up to all of us 
to support that vision. Thank you. One addition to the agenda, uh, because we weren't sure, wasn't sure she was coming, State Auditor Kathy McGinnis. Yeah, we're gonna put you on the spot. Come on. You can blame your staff. They're, they're doing their job. Yeah. You speak from the heart. All right. Well, okay. Well, you got music too. Okay. <laughs> All right, you got music. <laughs> um, it's, it's an honor to be here. Um, I, I, I really am, was not planning on, on doing this. And this is really about collaboration and community. Anywhere you go, up and down the state, as I've said, Delaware is a small state, but it's a big community. Because, and as my mother said, don't talk about anybody, because either they know you or you're related to them. So that was, <laughs> that was something. But this is really just about community. I'm excited to be here. This is amazing work of all of you all. So I'm just saying thank you to you for what you're doing, and I, I kind of feel like this might be a chain, because I heard there might be maybe one or two more looking to come around in the city, so thank you all very much. I, I'm, I'm proud to uh, serve you all as your state auditor, and uh, just very proud of the group here. You all are on the up and up, and you are doing good things and making a difference, a meaningful difference in many people's lives. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Zora Rothwell and I have the pleasure of serving as your second vice president of the Teen Executive Committee and I'm also a founding member of the Warehouse. <laughs> Last but certain not, but not least, I'd like to introduce Aaron Bass, CEO of Eastside Charter School and longtime partner of the work group. Mr. Bass founded Breakthrough Fort Lauderdale, served as president for National Breakthrough Directors Association, and served as co-chairman of Fort Lauderdale Mayor's Educational Board. He also served as the instructional consultant for the Philadelphia Eagles. Please welcome Aaron Bass to the stage, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. I am bringing you greetings from Eastside Charter School, which is a top place to work. Um, and that'll be coming out later in August by the News Journal. And also want to talk about the APEX program that'll be pay, uh, based here. So APEX is a program from Eastside Charter. We, we partner with Tower Hill, with Tadnell, with Sanford, and with Wilmington Friends School. Children come to Eastside, take classes simultaneous at these private schools. And I got to tell you, these are the top performing kids in the state. The average eighth grader from Eastside's APEX program walks out reading on a college level by eighth grade. In the last two years, these same students that have graduated are off in high schools. A, they have earned $377,000 in two years to private high schools. They are some fierce children that will be walking through these halls, and we are so glad to be a partner with uh, the warehouse and with the work group. So I want to talk to you. I just want to tell you I am here to appreciate my brother from another mother, Logan, and to uh, the mother that produced him. Thank you so much. <laughs> Very briefly, Logan is, is about the power of an idea. And so when you think about just, just coming from a concept in 2017 to what we see today, the work group, I am so glad that the warehouse didn't open during the pandemic because if you have seen the work the work group did during the pandemic, hats off to them. Putting money in people's pockets, working with young people, and providing places for education, and being a soul in this area, I am so proud to see the work that took place during the pandemic and even now as we open up with the work group. Really briefly, I know we started off and discussed church, and so I just want to leave with this. There was a place called Nazareth that somebody said, what good can come from Nazareth? What good can come from Nazareth? There is nothing that you will find there because every bad thing you could think that ever happened comes out of Nazareth. I tell you that Jesus comes out of Nazareth. There's somebody who said, what good can come out of Riverside? 
What good can come out of Riverside? We are here today because we've not even finished the work that's being done. You see, it's started by teens, it's by teens and for teens, but you should know that these children will be scientists, lawyers, doctors. They will run <laughs> Delaware. And because the power of an idea that this group has had, I'm glad to be a partner, I'm glad to be a, a cheerleader, and I'm so glad for the work that's only being started. Thank you so much. The music has gone too far. That brother good. Radical without without message. Well, I got news for you. You ain't heard nothing yet. And if you don't I promise know, you, it's about to pass the collection plate around. Aaron, we need to go be a governor or a preacher, one or the other. <laughs> about to pass some. Need some more money after that, brother. That was good. I almost okay. I don't know who I introduce next. Now we appreciate that. Um, next up, coming to the stage. Uh, she said, and I seen her, she was like, Blake, make sure you, you yeah. She was looking at me. She is, uh, I'm, I'm going to go off script. She is like the mama bear around here. All the teens will tell you. She's, uh, she really cares about the teens here and the warehouse itself. Like, I ain't even introduce her. I ain't even, look. Before I, look, I'm going to just say it real quick. I'm going to read it all. I'm going to read it. She said, Blake, make sure, because you put a lot of work into this. I know, I got you, Logan, two minutes. I got you, Logan. All right. She is the Director of Operations here at the Warehouse. To share a few words about her, Melody is the 20, 2019 Women in Business honoree and a 2021 Delaware State Bar Association Liberty Bell Award recipient. Good gosh. She's also the co-founder and board chairwoman of I Am My Sister's Keeper that uses, yep that uses the holistic approach to help build positive self-image, emotional and mental awareness while introducing leadership skills building through community and sisterhood for girls ages six through 18. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please show a round of applause. This lady, she cried. We had a, a, a thing and she cried on there because she really cares about these teens. Am I lying, y'all? We, we had a thing and she cried because she really cares about this team. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Miss Melody Phillips to the stage. everybody. I'm often told I don't need a microphone, so I guess I need to lower my voice. <laughs> um, welcome to the warehouse is something I have an opportunity to say consistently all the time when we do tours. And I am probably the only person standing up here without prepared remarks because I don't need them when I have an opportunity to talk about these young people. <laughs> they are phenomenal and I absolutely love what I do and get an opportunity to pour into them because I grew up in South Bridge West Side um, <laughs> and it we did not have a teen warehouse we did have a neighborhood house and it was there and um, my family was caught up in the crack epidemic so um, when teens ask me how I got a master's degree, why am I in a PhD program, I want them to know that yes, you can aspire to do all of those things despite your current circumstances, no matter where you grow up or where you live. And so it is my great honor to um, work for them because they are my bosses. <laughs> it is a pleasure to be able to have actual bosses like Logan and Kenyatta. Kenyatta is my boss lady and they instill in me and give me the opportunity to do all this creative stuff with the teens in the building. Um, I wanna take a moment to say to my warehouse team, Sierra Harris, Jenny Vizi. There's Jenny over there. Ken Moses. Ken is the reason why the building looks the way it does. Um, Ken, please wave. <laughs> Brandon Wallace. <laughs> Kenneth Harris and Ronnie Haney are some of the most phenomenal individuals to work with, but I cannot do this work without my right hand. He never wants to be recognized. He is going to kill me for doing this. <laughs> he is turning around. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Aline. <laughs> 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 
When you have an opportunity to have a great work partner and they understand everything that you're going through and they um, jump in where you are weak and they pull you up and they do everything they can and we work a lot of hours, it's phenomenal. So you have to give people their flowers while they're here. And to my teens, I love you guys. I am tearing up because they're getting ready to leave and go off to college, which I'm so proud of them. But I want you all to know that these are some members of the Teen Executive Committee. Some are actually standing over there. Ariane Driver, Sky Knox, Soraya Hawkins. <laughs> these are black African-American young people who are changing the world. And if you don't do anything else, pour into them. They need to be poured into. They need to know that we support them and continue to give back. Show up for them. If you don't have an opportunity to do anything else, show up. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. And with that being said, to share a little bit more about her story and her journey, I would like to bring back to the stage Anaya Patterson. Thanks for the music. Um, so hello everyone again for like the 10th time. Um, my name is Anaya Patterson and I serve as the co-chair of the Warehouse Board and the president of the um, Teen Executive Committee. Um, I'm excited to be here with all of you today, and I want to thank you all for being here, not only at this event, um, but being here and supporting the warehouse and the work group. I'm be I've been in this position for a little over a year, but I've been with the warehouse since 2018, um, and these last three years are better than I'm sure any of us could have ever asked for. Um, I, along with Zora Rothwell, Jameer Hartgraves, Tyler Davis, Ariane Driver, and the rest of the co-founders were able to help build this teen center from the ground up. Um, in the beginning, many of us came into this opportunity apprehensive not really knowing what we were getting ourselves into. However, through the motivation of Logan um, and all that stuff, we were able to think creatively. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't give Logan his credit when it's due, but that's a phenomenal man. Um, um, with the help of Logan and all of that stuff, we were able to <laughs> be optimistic about the process. Um, as co-founders, we had the opportunity of sitting down with the architects and help craft what's now the warehouse. We assisted in mapping out the rooms and the layout of the space, along with how we're going to use each room um, to benefit the teens who come through the building. Um, not only was it the physical space that we helped create, but we also created a culture here at the warehouse. A four teens by teens culture, a culture of family, and a culture of love, a culture where we advocate for ourselves and for our peers. COVID-19 came in and took us all by surprise, forcing us to pivot in a direction we weren't really prepared for. Um, be but because of the amazing team I work with and the incredible teens I got to mentor, we were able to turn those negatives into positives. Since the beginning of COVID, um, we had over 400 teens sign up for membership and over 50 youth gain employment through the warehouse. Um, that just goes to show um, no matter the circumstances us teens are put under, we're always going to go the extra mile to get the job done and serve our community as best as we can. Um, once again, I would like to thank Logan for this opportunity and bringing me into this organization um, because believe it or not, it has completely changed my life and I couldn't be more grateful. Sorry, I'm trying not to get emotional. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to thank Miss Melody, Mr. Brian, Sierra, Jenny, Brandon, Mr. Ranik, Mr. Kenny, and everyone else who has been here and played um, an instrumental role in my life and the other teens here at the warehouse. Um, they are just as important as we are as teens, and we thank you guys very much. Um, I'm beyond excited for what's in store for the warehouse, um, the teens of Wilmington, um, and everything else. Thank you. All right, so most of you guys here know me as the first vice chair of our teen executive committee here, but that is literally about to change right now. Um, 
it is time for us to pass the torch to the new teams and induct our new team executive committee. So if you look over there in that corner, you'll see a whole bunch of teams who've been grinding, who've been working hard, who've been through these programs, who know the warehouse in and out, and have been busting their behinds for this position. And I'm just so grateful to pass the torch to these teams. We have a total of nine positions available, including one general member, one historian, two outreach coordinators, one parliamentarian, one treasurer, one secretary, one second vice president, and one first chair vice president who will be co-chairing our warehouse board alongside Anai Patterson. And once I call your name for your position, make sure you come up here so you can shake our hands, you can get a picture with us. Um, I know y'all over there are nervous, so calm down, relax, y'all good. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start off with our first general member. So our first general member of the Teen Executive Committee will be Zania Smith. Our historian of our teen executive committee will be Bryson Bullard. <laughs> Unfortunately, Bryson was not able to be here with us today, but um, I'll be sure to let him know that he's received the position on our exec. So um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we have two outreach coordinators slash event coordinators. So when you hear your name, please come up. Um, our two outreach coordinators will be Makai Booker and Janasia McKinney. All right, so we're down to our last five positions. So our parliamentarian of our teen executive committee will be Rakaya Hardy Holmes. Is she here? Rakaya is also not here with us today. <laughs> All right, our treasurer of our teen executive committee will be Morgan Davis Charles. <laughs> Morgan was not able to be here with us today. <laughs> All right, so now we're down to our um, last three positions, our first vice chair, second vice chair, and secretary. So our secretary of our teen executive committee will be Cameron Ballard, but he's not here today, so. <laughs> All right, so now we're down to our first vice chair and our second vice chair positions. So um, our second vice chair of our teen executive committee will be Mrs. Aaliyah Patterson. <laughs> All right, so our first vice president of our teen executive committee is, can I get a drum roll please? <laughs> Mrs. Amaris Johnson. <laughs> Amaris will be co-chairing our warehouse board alongside um, Anaya Patterson um, for the remainder of this time. So I'm just so happy to pass the torch to these teams right here. Welcome to the exec, y'all. <laughs> Clap it up for him one more time. We gotta get a picture. We gotta move this podium or something. to do is get low. Get low. Like, oh, like, oh, there you go. Hold on, did y'all just find out just now? Wow. They just found out on the spot. That's okay. That's dope. Okay, get up in there. One more time, clap it up for the new executive team board members. Oh, wow. We're almost there, guys. I know. I know. It's a little bit hot out here. We got about four more minutes. 
Four more minutes. Uh, we're going to continue. Next up, once again, I want to bring up Top Model, now CEO, Logan Heron. One more time. One more time for Top Model. Well, we have a couple of special guests that arrived um, a little after our start, so I want to recognize them. We have former City Council President Hanifa Shabazz in the building, outside the building. Yeah, we talking about you, honey. We recognize you, girl. And look, both of them not paying attention. Mr. Ray Rhodes, board chair of Kingswood Community Center. Former Riverside resident. Last group, and I say the best for last, I believe. If you are a member of the work group staff, stand up and throw your W's up. Oh, yeah, I'm serious. If you're a member of a work group staff, look, Dave was proud to throw his W up. I'm trying to get Mel to throw her W up. That's what that's all about. That was, the, that was the whole point of that. But no, I appreciate all of you past, present. I see some former work group staff members. Thank you for coming and showing your love and support. We love you. You have been a part of this journey. We have two surprise announcements. The first, actually, let's shout out to Blake. The Brain Saunders. Yeah. MC host to the stars. Give a shout out to Brooke. All right. Hold on, you got to check. You got to find it. What you got for me? Huh? I don't have anything for you. <laughs> you are being paid to be here, sir. You, your check is in the mail. <laughs> Let's not get it twisted. Um, okay. So first, big announcement. And these are huge announcements. Like, so thank you for sticking in down the home stretch. First, I'm excited. I'm excited to announce that the warehouse is the proud recipient of a $500,000 grant from the Delaware Community Foundation. Hold up, let me finish. As a facilif facilitator, information resource, and manager of charitable funds, the Delaware Community Foundation helps communities and philanthropists focus charitable resources for the greatest community benefit statewide. The warehouse is so grateful for this generous foundation. And it's not just a Delaware Community Foundation, that's by way of where the money's coming through, but it's really to the William T. McLaughlin Educational Fund. And if you know anything about former Mayor Bill McLaughlin and his son, where, where are you? There he is, former educator. Are you still an educator? Always an educator, retired, yeah, right. Shout out to Bill McLaughlin and the McLaughlin Educational Fund. Um, they have funded things such as the Dream Chasers program, of which I was a proud member to serve on the McLaughlin Education Fund board. So to do the check presentation, Bill, we're going to have you come up. And I'm going to have, uh, actually, let's do that first. We're going to have you come up and do the check presentation. Where's the big check with the six figures on it? You know I love me a good six figure check. All right. Come on, Bill. Thank you. If you are a board member of the William T. McLaughlin Educational Fund, if you are a board member, please stand up. Former board members of the Education Fund, please stand up. I know there are others here. Wave your hand if you are standing up. I see you, Joe Kane. Dave Sisko never wants to be acknowledged. We know who you are, Dave. All right. Thank you. It says you wrote a lot of money, or wrote a big check to us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next thing, special surprise. So please join me in welcoming back Councilwoman Xanthia Oliver and Mayor Mike Brzezicki back to the stage. Diva. <laughs> Thanks again, Logan. Um, and I would like to thank to the mayor for approving. Uh, it's been in the works for a while, and I want to make, I want to say something. I want to make a statement. Don't call city council asking to change the name of a street after you uh, just because you're Ray Fisher or just because you're Stormy Norman or your grandfather lived to be 90. It doesn't work like that. So this man has, we've been working on this street for some time. So please don't call. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks again, Logan. Uh, it's one of the things the mayor gets to do all by himself. <laughs> thank you. 
Okay, the new street sign is already installed on the corner of what used to be Thatcher Street, East 11th Street. Please visit, take a picture, post it on social media, and don't forget to use hashtag warehouseway. To me, it's more than just a sign. This means that the warehouse in their entirety work group have made a permanent mark on this neighborhood. The work group may have only been in our community for a few years, but the impact of your presence is felt by all. Thank you to the board members, the teens, family, staff, members for ongoing dedication. We could not have done it without the work group. Thanks a lot, Kenyatta. Another call from Kenyatta. You can, you can tell we did not choreograph this presentation. Here it is. Here it is. Mayor, you gotta, we're gonna do this ribbon cutting thing, right? Blake, you wanna close this out? All right. All right, the moment we all been waiting for. We're actual, about to, actually about to do the ribbon cutting, so I need some really good music for this. And as they prepare. That is not, what is this? I said you came to play and then you you dropped the ball in the fourth quarter. What you doing? I need something. I need something good. As a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, before we cut this ribbon, please feel free to stop by in the gymnasium before you leave. We have some light snacks, the opportunity to meet our teens, find out where they're going to school. Make sure you tour the warehouse. We also have some fun swag on the inside. Also, if you haven't done so already, please follow the work group on social media. You can follow me on social media at Blake the Brain. That's right, I'm trying to get my followers up. Absolutely. I am available for hire. All right, we about to do this. We're going to count this thing down, Logan. We're going to count this down. All right, we got everybody, man. Sure. Hold, on, hold on, don't cut it yet. We're going to count down. Go, count down. Here we go. I went loud and proud by everybody. Here we go. Count down. Three, two, one. Cut. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Teen Warehouse brought to you by Rich Riverside.